Greetings, Poke fans! Michael here, and today I'm doing another PokeTuber Reacts video, this time to a video by Papa C, beating Pokemon how Nintendo intended it. This is a video I stumbled upon a few weeks ago and watched the first minute or minute and a half of it and then realized, wait, this actually looks super interesting and it would make a great reaction video, so I stopped watching it and I reached out to Papa C and asked if it was okay if I made a reaction video and graciously he said yes. So a huge thank you to Papa C for giving me permission to make this. Links to both the original video and his channel are in the description below. Make sure you go check him out. From the bit of this video I have already seen, it seems the general premise of this video is playing through a Pokemon game based on what a guidebook tells him to do. and. I'm really excited to see how this plays out because I was a guidebook fiend in my youth. I had a Ruby and Sapphire one, Fire and Leaf Green one, and an Emerald one, and I think even some Gen 4 guidebooks too. So I'm really excited to see what the guidebook tells him to do that I don't remember. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel since less than half of my viewers are subscribed. Darkness. And also, of course, subscribe to Papa C, and let's dive into my reaction to beating Pokemon how Nintendo intended it. All right, here we are, beating Pokemon How Nintendo Intended It by Papa C. I got my gamer goggles on, hell yeah. And let's get started. Beating Pokemon How Nintendo Intended It To Be. Indeed. I played a lot of games as a kid, like Mario Sunshine, The Wind Waker, and Sonic Heroes, but one- so I never played any of those games as a kid. I played Wind Waker as an adult on the Wii U, have not beaten it, Sunshine, have not played at all. I have 3D All-Stars, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna beat him in order. I haven't beat Mario 64 yet because it is a brutally difficult game, my God. And then Sonic Heroes, I've just never played. One thing that all of these games had in common for me was that I never actually finished them. I would get oh. lost or stuck at one point of the game without knowing how to get through it. And since I was a kid and the internet was still pretty new at the time, I couldn't easily look up guys on YouTube like you could today. Yeah, there's, I, I'm in the same boat. I, I'm trying to think of games that I played as a kid but never actually beat. Um, but there were there are games I played as like a teenager and never, or as an adult <laughs> that I've never beaten because I got to one fight. Like I remember I played Uncharted One as a teenager and there was one part I couldn't get through after like three tries and, I, and then I just never played it again because I was like this is too hard and I'm tired. Like I'm, I'm dreading having to do that. And then I went back as an adult and uh, beat all four of them in like a quick succession. So maybe I should give some of those games I played as a kid a try again. Back then, if you wanted help on a game, your best bet was to buy a strategy guide. There were so many different types of these yep. in the early 2000s, especially for Nintendo games. Absolutely. I got a few of these as a kid and used them from time to time. Okay, so look, this just, so this is something interesting I need to point out. You see the Mario Kart Double Dash guidebook on the left? It says, the official guide from Nintendo Power, which was a magazine that has been discontinued long ago. This Fire and Leaf Green guidebook is by Prima. P-R-I-M-A, see it at the top there? My Fire and Leaf Green guidebook is by Nintendo Power. And I don't have it here in my office with me today, but I've shown it in videos before. Um, I will put a screenshot of a video where I've shown it off before somewhere on the screen. Um, so that's one thing I'm intrigued to see is because while I also had a Fire Red Leaf Green guidebook, it wasn't the same one. So this will be cool. But never actually read through the whole thing and read about exactly how they wanted you to be. Oh, it looks game. so different than mine. I don't know what a strategy <laughs> guide was since they're not really around anymore. They were basically just a guy that told you exactly how to beat the game. They're, they're still around, they just don't sell as well. <laughs> I mean, like, I bought a, I bought the Sword and Shield strategy guide. Not because I needed it, just because I thought it would be fun to have. <laughs> I just used these guides at parts I got stuck on or to find any secrets or easter eggs within the game. I recently saw a Minecraft video where somebody took a guide made by Mojang and used that to beat Minecraft exactly how they wanted you to. Mm. So in typical PokeTuber fashion- I, I had this one! Somebody... I, oh, I have, I have this, this Mario. This new Super Mario Bros. guidebook for the DS, I have this one. God, I wish I had him on me. I should have brought him to the office for this video. Elsa's idea from another game and completely spin it into Pokemon like it's original. I have this Prima guide on Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf oh, Green, Prima. which Pretty does sure have Prima. the Nintendo official seal of approval, which does technically mean that Nintendo endorses this product and that- <laughs> I love the checkboxes at the top. I mean, there's like maps for every area, hard to catch Pokemon, but then also, 
all 40 berries listed. We have an extensive botanical encyclopedia. And that somebody at Nintendo somewhere read through this guide and thought, yup, that's how you beat Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green on the Game Boy Advance. I took a quick look at this guide before making this video, and it seems to cover just about everything you need to know about these games, even mm -hmm. from type advantages to where to catch every Pokemon. As a Good. kid, I cut out the page that had all the berries for some reason, so <laughs> unless- <laughs> It doesn't- It doesn't even have- <laughs> Doesn't even have all 40 berries. Wait, these toys? Oh, those little- So, I don't know if I had any- Oh wait, no, I have that Torchic. It's not here, but I have that Torchic. That was the Torchic that was in the first ever episode of Pokemon Talk. I don't know what those things are on the upper left, but some of those like uh, hard figures, like they're, they're like plastic, they're not plushies. Those I had as a kid. I remember that Metagross distinctly. You see, it has a weird, it looks like it has a weird mouth. It's like a disc it can fire. I did have that. That's, that's, wow, I totally forgotten about those. Unless we need to do something involving berries, we should be good following this guide exactly. Oh yeah, I'm it's fire I'm going to try my green. best to avoid any prior knowledge I have on these games besides very basic type advantages and stuff like that. And I want to beat the game exactly how this guy tells us to. Okay. Now that I have access to all of the secret information Game Freak and Nintendo didn't want us to know about Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, like how you should heal before every Elite Four battle, didn't know that, and how rock and fire are apparently super effective against poison. I really oh no. <laughs> oh no. Although, man, you didn't know you're supposed to heal between every elite four, but like, man, I was- For safety, safety purposes, you got to heal. They're, but they're coming at you with a fully healed team. You should be fully healed too. I wanted to double check on the, uh, the poison thing. So I thought rock might have been a thing. So rock does resist poison. Obviously poison is not weak to it. Fire is nowhere. <laughs> I really don't think they proofread these things at all. All right, so let's just actually start up a brand new save on Pokemon Fire Red and see what the guide tells us to do. All right. Oh, nostalgia. The strategy guide is pretty straightforward at the start. Name your rival, I named him Nintendo. <laughs> Walk into the grass and pick your starter. It did tell me to pick the potion up in the PC at your starting house, which was helpful, and say goodbye to your mother. And it also said to pick the starter I like most, so nice. I picked Bulbasaur. I name it subscribe, which you should totally do, by the way. There you go. I good, good. Away. Good, good YouTube strategies. What is this? Hammer away. To win my rival battle, just as the guide said. Got the parcel, caught a Pidgey, named it Twitter, follow me on Twitter by the way, link is in the description, and headed to Route 22 since it suggests that I catch a Pokemon here before the optional rival battle, although it doesn't tell me that the battle is optional. I caught a Mankey and named oh. it Hawk, and then level up my Pokemon to be between level 7 and 9, just as the guy suggests. I beat my rival pretty easily, and there's really not much to be said in the Viridian Forest, but I do catch a Caterpie and name it Dan, and then head towards Pewter City. There's only one event in Pewter City, and according to the guide, it reads, There is only one event in Pewter City, but you can visit the nearby gym for 50 Poke Dollars. It doesn't get you anything, but it's interesting. The Pokeball noted on the map is invisible, so search the area for it. You won't be able to proceed to the east till you complete the gym leader battle, so head for the gym. Okay. The Prima Guide is worse than the Nintendo Power one. <laughs> I don't remember the Nintendo Power Guide ever telling me I had to pay to get into the gym. Oh, I see what's happening. This is supp it's supposed to be the museum. You can visit the nearby museum for $50. That's what it is. They meant to put museum and they put gym. Okay. Analysis. What? I found that wording to be really awkward and I'm not really sure what it means, but I headed into the gym. I'm sure what it means. I figured it out. Call me Detective MNJTV, Private Eye. In battle anyway against Brock and the guide says to have Pokemon between levels 11 to 13, so I do just that. Subscribe and Hawk handle the gym pretty easily, yeah, I mean, although surprisingly, the guide doesn't tell me anything about type advantages or hmm. what types Brock's Pokemon are, so I just hammer away at him again, just as <laughs> the guide says. I don't know why I keep saying With your most away. potent I offensive attacks. Now. Man, imagine them, imagine you have like a Pikachu and it's like, hammer away with your most potent offensive attack. Thundershock. Moon and on the way, it specifically tells me not to buy the Magikarp in the Pokemon Center right outside of Mount Moon. Now, I don't yeah, know about you guys, but I 
always by the Magikarp. It's a tradition for me whenever I play a Kanto base. Really? Game. But since the guide says not to, I guess we're not going to because apparently they're so common in Kanto. My guide, my guide as a kid also told me do not buy the Magikarp, and uh, so I never, I never did because the guide was like, "This is a ripoff. You can get them very easily later." And I was like, "Okay." But also, my first ever playthrough of Fire Red and Leaf Green, my team was just my Blastoise, so it didn't even matter. I go through Mount Moon pretty easily as the guy tells me exactly where to go, which is pretty cool. Pick up the Dome Fossil because I prefer Chaos, and Teach Hawk Mega Punch <laughs> because it's a pretty decent move and I don't really have that many other options. Now in Cerulean City, it tells me to battle Misty, and I have to level up my Pokemon to be between levels 18 and 21, so I have to do a little bit of grinding. If only there was a group of nearby trainers or something to <laughs> battle for faster XP, like on a route up north or something, but since the guy tells me to battle Misty first, I am forced to grind the wild area and not head north yet. Oh, that stinks! <laughs> Man, I can't believe it doesn't... I mean, I feel like mine... I feel like mine also probably just showed Misty like on the Cerulean City page, but doesn't... May... I, don't, I don't remember if it told you to keep going or not, but I do think it's funny that because... Oh! Haven't turned the page yet. <laughs> that's hilarious. Misty's gym was pretty easy since my Bulbasaur evolved to Ivysaur at this point, so that's two badges down already. The guy yeah, if you grind didn't that long with the grass type. grass or electric types in this gym against Misty, which was a lot more helpful than the Brock fight, but I really think it would have made a lot more sense for the guy to tell me to battle my rival first and go battle trainers up north so I can grind a little bit higher. But hey, if Nintendo endorses this, they gotta know better than me, I guess. The rival battle, uh... I lost it the first time I did it as a kid. I wasn't like healed and I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> so I like reset my game. Cause as a kid, when I was a kid, I never actually lost a battle. I would always reset my game if I lost. Cause I was like, I took consequences. And so I, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was stuck there for a little while. Cause all I had was my war turtle. So after beating Misty, I head north to fight Nintendo. Never thought I'd ever say that sentence, but it goes huh. pretty smoothly. My Pidgey kept getting critted again. I don't know why my Pidgey has this snack for having terrible luck. It also got poisoned three for three times in the Verdian Forest, but I hey. was able to clean up. I was a little scared of this Abra, but thanks to the handy dandy guide, I looked up Abra's level up moveset and apparently it has no moves to hit Ivysaur, so that was yep. pretty easy. Charmander was the same, it was level 18 and didn't even evolve yet, what's up with that Nintendo? So I beat the rival anyway, and now I have to head towards Route 24. Route 24 it's was gonna end up so overleveled. I go Bill and get the SSN ticket, just as the guide says. I head towards Vermilion City, and the game has a lot of events for us to do in the city. Mm. First, we have to get the VS Seeker from this trainer of the Pokemon Center, we'll probably never even use it, Get the old rod so we can catch our own magic card we want to now, but we still probably won't ever use this. And pick up the bike factor so we can get the bike from Cerulean City. And then we yeah. have the most important event of this area, the SSN. The guide suggests that all my Pokemon be around level 20 for the rival fight, and since they are, I just go straight to the rival battle, ignoring most of the ship. Although the guide warns me about Nintendo's powered up Kadabra, since it is quite fast. It tells me Before just it's <laughs> faster than. <laughs> Before it lays waste to most of your group, before it wreaks devastation upon the townspeople. <laughs> lays waste, that's just such good word choice. <laughs> oh man. In the Kadabra, if I want to beat it, wish I thought of that myself. Thanks, Nintendo. I beat my rival pretty easily, get the HM for a cut, and now it's time to go to Lieutenant Surge's gym. The guide recommends that I use ground types as they are super effective against electric As Pokemon, one would. <laughs> but since I don't have any, I just rely on Hawk for most of this gym. I don't know why the guy didn't suggest I go through Diglett's cave before the gym. Oh, it doesn't suggest that? Oh man, I feel like it would. I feel like maybe mine did. I might just be... I might, this might just be like wishful thinking now, you know, just be like, oh, well, <laughs> my guide, the one that I have, the official Nintendo Power Guide, it's just a thing that, but I didn't, I don't have it, <laughs> it's not in my office. To catch a Diglett, which happens to be a ground type, for this gym and collect some of the items in Route 2 that'll help me out later, but since I'm trying to pretend like I've never played these games before, I battle Lieutenant Surge first, as the guide suggests. I buy some Paralyzed Heals, it tells me to do that oh, as well. Excuse me. And aside from getting Paralyzed and Double Teamed so much, the gym really wasn't that bad. Now at this point, the guide gets a little confusing for me. A little trippy having, uh, having Pidgeotto on the field there in a Lieutenant Surge battle. <laughs> 
It says that on Route 11, east of Vermilion City, I should go left and enter the Pokemon Center to heal, then go around the bend into Rock Tunnel. think they put this note on the wrong page. <laughs> I think this is supposed to be the route that actually has Rock Tunnel on it. Rock Tunnel isn't on this route though, so I think that the guide got confused with Route 9, yep. which the guide tells me to go to at the end of the section about Lieutenant Surge's battle. Turns out the tip that they have on the page about Route 9 is the same exact tip they had on Route 11 telling me to go around the bend, but it also tells me to teach Flash to one of the Pokemon on my team since I needed to get through the rock tunnel much easier. There's only one issue with that though, I don't have Flash yet. The guide also didn't tell me anywhere as of yet where to get Flash. I know it's near the other side of the Diglett's Cave on Route 2, which the guide said was optional by the way, but if someone has never played these games before, I can see them getting stuck at this point, especially if it was 2004 and they couldn't just look it up online as easily as they could today. Luckily, in okay, that was where I was gonna go. That's okay. So I was gonna say like, man, it's ridiculous that they never tell you to get it. But then I was like about to say something about like, okay, I I know Flash, like that's that's gotta be an HM or a TM and then you go to the end and then it tells you. But it also, but it also doesn't say anything of like how to get back to it. Cause if it never mentions Diglett's cave and if it never mentions it, then supposedly it doesn't exist, then that's an issue because you can't get back to route two at this point in the game without Diglett's Cave. In the appendix at the end of the guide, it does tell me that I could find Flash on Route 2, and since I now have access to Cut, I can access it near the Viridian Forest. They really should have put more of an emphasis on backtracking to get Flash in the actual walkthrough. Like, it would have been amazing if they said, hey, before battling Surge, go through the Diglett's Tunnel. You could- Okay, maybe, maybe he's just like, oh, this, I can use Diglett's Tunnel. Possibly catch a Diglett here, which is good against Lieutenant Surge. And oh, by the way, on the other side, you get Flash, which you need to progress in the game. I ended up going back and getting it anyway, and I had to catch a few more Pokemon for the aid to give to me as I needed 10. So uh, fun fact, Flash is not actually necessary. You can get through Rock Tunnel without it. And in fact, with the guidebook's maps, it's easier to get through it without Flash than it would be without the guidebook. Just, I'm nitpicking, I'm sorry. One of which was a drowsy I named Cletus, since I can teach it Flash. I don't know why I picked the name Cletus, it just seemed really fitting at the time. Headed into no, 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 I, I totally get it. I, uh, I've named many a, many a Pokemon with an impulse word that popped into my head, like, Fast the Slugma. And either this map is terrible or I have no idea how to read a map. Most likely the latter, but I couldn't figure out where I entered from. Turns out I actually entered on this ladder on the part of the map that's labeled the exit level, not the entrance level, and there's only two levels that you switch between. I get out as quickly as I can. Yikes. <laughs> Wait, can I, I need to like, can I look at this map again? Cause I have Rock Tunnel pretty much memorized. Most likely the ladder, oh. but I couldn't figure out where I entered. Move your hand. Okay, there we go. Okay, I see what it is. So the entrance and exit level of Rock Tunnel is the same. And so naming it the exit level is super confusing. <laughs> oh God, that's terrible. My guidebook was better. <laughs> Turns out I actually entered on this ladder on the part of the map that's labeled the exit level, not the entrance level. And there's only two levels that you switch between. I get out as quickly as I can and get to Lavender Town after staring at the map for a good five minutes or so, trying to figure out exactly where I was. But the guide tells me to ignore Lavender Town for now and head west to Route 18 so I can get to Celadon City. Good thing there's it tells you that. There's quite a lot to do in Celadon City now, like get this free Eevee or steal it because this guy's kind of just standing there and lets me take it. I don't really know why that happens. I <laughs> get a water stone as well and evolve into Vaporeon since I don't have a water type yet and I know I'm going to need Surf somewhere down the road. I also get the coin case and gamble like the guy tells me to, although you don't really need to gamble at all to progress in the game. I give the girl on top of the department store some drinks as well in hopes of getting a good TM like Ice Beam for my new Vaporeon as the guide says I could get Ice Beam. I named the Vaporeon Joey by the way, but I don't get any special TM unfortunately, so Joey is just stuck knowing Water Pulse for now. Now I head to the game corner and- It says you can get Ice Beam from that girl? She's always Light Screen Reflect and then I think Protect? No, it's not Protect. Light Screen Protect and 
safeguard? It's some other status move. And start the first big Team Rocket event. I talked to the grunt in front of the poster, beat them, and then notice an interesting note in this guide as I head down into the hideout. It says, there are no random encounters in the Team Rocket hideout, so all fights are at your own discretion, in parentheses, where possible. Which literally translates to, all of the fights are optional except for the ones that are not. <laughs> What? That's so bad. <laughs> there are no random encounters. All fights are at your discretion. Where they are avoidable. The other one? God, that's funny. Thank you, Nintendo. I make it through the rocket hideout pretty easily and prepare for my Giovanni fight. My Pokemon are all level 25 plus like the guide suggests, but it warns me about Giovanni's Kangaskhan of all Pokemon. I have a pretty easy time at the manky. start of the battle, which makes me realize that these older Pokemon games really aren't any harder than newer games as people say, but the Kangaskhan does give me a bit of trouble. I thought- Okay, in, in reference to that, it's just, uh, the games themselves, I don't think, like, most of the games are harder. It's just there are particular instances in certain games that are harder because of level jumps. So, like, Claire is really tough in the Johto games because of the, like, there's like a- a level jump, <laughs> you know, that is like, just playing through normally, you're gonna be like 10 levels lower than her because it's like, it's like, it's harder because it's just bad scaling. I thought Hawk being a fighting type would one shot it, but nope, Hawk got one shot it instead. The guy tells oh. me to start hammering away anyway. Really likes that word. I don't know why it keeps saying that for nearly every important battle, but I'm able to do it and defeat Giovanni and get the Silph so we can head back to Lavender Town. Now, before heading to Lavender Town, we have to collect the fourth gym badge from Erica first. Since I have Twitter, this is a breeze, and I lay down the law as the guy suggests to get our fourth. <laughs> Hammer away! Lay waste! Lay down the law! <laughs> this person, the person who wrote this really, wants to add emotion and stakes to this. Fourth gym badge. I head to Lavender Town now, and Pidgeotto continues to be the hard carry of my team throughout this game. I dispatched my rival as the guide suggests. Ooh. Great to see that the guide is using a different word other than hammer for once, and yep. head up the tower. I try and catch the Marowak at the top, but learn the hard way that you can't do that apparently. Nope. Guy didn't say anything about that. And after that I rescue Mr. Fuji, get the Pokey Flute, head south to go towards Fuchsia City, Wake up the Snorlax, kill it because I don't care about catching it, and continue heading south. Vicious? The guy completely ignores Cycling Road at this point, and looking ahead, I still don't see anything about Cycling Road in the guide. Wait, what? They just, uh, they just don't mention that entire route? What? <laughs> That's so weird. What on earth? Which is a much easier way to get to Fuchsia City, but it does tell me to go behind Cycling Road where you can get Fly, which I immediately teach to Twitter, which also evolved the Pidgeot. I think it would have made way more sense to have me go down Cycling Road since it's quicker, easier, yep. and there's trainers like a battle there as well, but we do exactly as the guide suggests and ignore Cycling Road. Now that I'm in Fuchsia City, the guide wants me to battle Koga straight away. It oh no, no, no! I my Pokemon to be between levels 35 and 37, so I do that for everyone except for Hawk, since I don't really think Hawk will be too useful against a poison type gym. It also okay. suggests that I use Pokemon good against poison types, like psychic types, and fire and rock types, <laughs> even though those last two types aren't even super effective against poison. I start the battle with Koga, and let's have a little fun and guess what the guide tells me to do against Koga. Does it tell me to A, dispatch him, B, Ooh. lay down the law, or C, hammer away? The it's answer C. Is C, hammer away. Hammer away is always the answer when you're in a Pokemon battle. The yes! guide also suggests that I use poison type Pokemon against Koga's poison types, especially his muck, so I don't get toxic because it's a very bad form of poison. Now, while this would get around being poisoned from toxic, it doesn't help that Venusaur, my only poison type, and most poison types in general, can't really do much to other poison types yeah, like no. Koga's muck. <laughs> Since the guy tells me to do this, I do it anyway, even though using Pidgeot is clearly the better option for this battle. I stall with Leech Seed on Venusaur anyway, and get through the gym pretty easily, although it does take quite a few turns. After getting the fifth badge, I head into the Safari Zone to collect Surf and the Gold Teeth, which I can then exchange for Strength, catch this random Parasect for no reason, which I'll probably never use, and that <laughs> pretty much wraps up everything we need to do in Fuchsia City for now. 
The guy tells me to head back to Celadon City to get the tea from this lady so I can give it to the guards and then pass it to Saffron City. I've always thought it was strange how in the Kanto games that you can get the tea as soon, as soon as you get to Celadon. Which means you can, you are capable of beating Sabrina, clearing out Silphco and beating Sabrina. Well, maybe, maybe there's a roadblock in front of Silphco. I don't, I, I'm not actually entirely sure about that. Cause I was gonna say like, you can like clear out Silphco and beat Sabrina before you even get through the rocket hideout. But part of me is thinking maybe they don't let you into Silphco until you've cleared out the rocket hideout. Or maybe they do, I'm not sure. Someone let me know in the comments if there's any kind of roadblocks or if it's just possible to get to Celadon, get the tea and then do all the saffron stuff before doing anything else. It probably would have made more sense to tell me to do this when I first got to Celadon, but that really isn't that big of a deal. The first thing the guy tells us to do here is to take on the mini gym, AKA the fighting dojo. Pidgeot and Vaporeon make this very easy, and at the end I'm rewarded between the choices- His squad is so well leveled. The options are Hitmonchan, one of the coolest Pokemon in existence, and Hitmonlee, a cool Pokemon, but not nearly as cool as Hitmonchan, so I pick Hitmonchan, of course, and name it Jackie. I don't think it's one of the coolest Pokemon ever, but I respect his taste. Now we have to head through the Silphco, and luckily the guide has a cheat sheet for us that allows us to get through it rather quickly, while ignoring most of the trainers. Towards the end, we have a rival fight, and all the guy does is trash my rival saying how this fight should be so easy. It even goes in on his execute and a little bit on his Growlithe for some reason, saying, quote, execute is well, a sad <laughs> joke. And if it thinks it's gonna help against the Elite Four, it needs its head examined. Pretty much this- What? Same goes for Growlithe though. It can be tricky against your grass type Pokemon, so watch it. Okay, I- <laughs> I never liked Execute, always thought it was a dumb Pokemon, but this is vicious! <laughs> what? That's so funny! It needs its head examined! Man, it's got like six heads! <laughs> oh, that's so good! Not sure what whoever wrote this has against Execute and Growlithe, but the rival battle was pretty easy and wasn't much of a threat. After the battle, oh I speak gosh. to this chap, as the guide calls them, to get this <laughs> Lapras, then proceed into the next room where Giovanni is waiting for us. The guide says how this fight isn't too bad, and how, quote, his Nidorino and Rhyhorn should go down fairly easily, because their levels at this point are no match for a decent electric, water, or grass type. Electric? See, as I have a Vaporeon and a Venus- wait a second, did it say electric type? It did didn't it? Against a ground type like Rhyhorn? I'll forgive this error since there hasn't been one in this guide for a little while, but I beat the first two Pokemon pretty easily. Hasn't been one like this for a little while, was one in the literal previous gym. <laughs> I hammer away at the Kangaskhan like there the guy suggests yet again, haven't heard that in a little while. And now it's time for Giovanni's Nidoqueen, which is one of his strongest Pokemon as of right now. The guy proceeds to tell me that Nidoqueen is easily cooked with a fairly well-powered electric Pokemon. What? But I don't have an electric type, and again, Nidoqueen is a ground type. So oh, this types, guide is well. awful! That's the second time in this section alone that it tells him to use an electric type against a ground type. I finish up with Giovanni's battle pretty easily regardless, get the Master Ball, and now we have to head to Sabrina's gym to fight her. I get oh my, my Pokemon gosh. to a round- how is, how is this guide so wrong? I don't remember any severe mistakes like that in mine. This is insane. Level 40 as the guide suggests and follow the map to Sabrina through the teleporters. I thought it was funny how the guide also suggests I destroy the trainers before Sabrina. The guide Goodness. writer is getting more and more savage as we get on to the later half of this game. My Vaporeon has bite, so this gym really isn't too bad since it's mostly psychic types, but it warns me about Sabrina's Alakazam. It says, it's fast, and many of its moves can lay waste to lay the waste. band in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I what? <laughs> It can lay waste to your intrepid band in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I don't understand. Who wrote this? Who wrote this? It's crazy. I have no idea what that means. But I get through this gym pretty easily again and head towards Pallet Town so I can surf south of Route 21 into Cinnabar Island. Now that we're in Cinnabar Island, the first event the guide wants me to do is revive my fossil, and I do that immediately, but just put it in the box right away since it's only level 5. 
I know that I still have this level 5 Caterpie on my team that I've had since Viridian Forest and I've been using since Death Fodder, but since my team is really top heavy between Pidgeot and Vaporeon, I see no reason to replace it or add a new team member as of right now. Now we head into the mansion to find the key to the gym since it's locked, and the guide mm -hmm. does a pretty good job of guiding me across it. I got a Growlithe and named it Rover, and now since my Pokemon are all mostly above level 40, it means I'm ready to take on Blaine. I head in the gym, proceed to one-shot nearly everything with Vaporeon, only going back to heal because I ran out of Surf PP, and Vaporeon is also slowly overtaking Pidgeot as being the best Pokemon on my team. I defeat Blaine Atta very boy, easily, Joe. get the 7th gym badge, and right after Blaine we have to head back to Viridian City to take on the 8th and final gym leader. Doesn't it have you got a C that I should all? be at least level 45 at this point, and I'm close enough so I go in there anyway, but it also warns me that Giovanni has a level 54 Nido King, which seems pretty scary because that's quite the level discrepancy if I'm only supposed to be around level 45. I go through this pretty easily regardless, and notice that the Nido King is actually level 45, uh, not 54, yeah. so it's that just there a typo. It is. The guide really likes to make mistakes on Giovanni fights for some reason. <laughs> I'm being overcritical since this is a 15 plus year old guide written by somebody who has probably played many other games and has written many other guides and can't know everything about every game they play. But if I've never played Pokemon before and I follow this guide exactly, I'd definitely be confused or lost at some parts. Luckily, it doesn't tell me to use electric types against his ground types this time. Yeah, that- that continuing on with the- Like, the, the thing about the poison, like psychic, it was like poison fire rock. Poison, Psychic, great. Fire Rock, they'll do neutral. It telling you to use electric against ground types, like a kid like trying to do that and it's just not working. Like I'd be furious. I'm like, it tells me to use electric and it's doing nothing. Like that's, that's the most egregious one of all because it's literally immune. The fight, I also realized that I've swept pretty much every single gym very easily since Lieutenant Surge including this final gym, and I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> if you know what you're doing, that's most Pokemon games. Feel really good heading to the Elite Four for the last stretch of this game. I stock up on some items before heading into Victory Road, but we have another rival battle to take care of first. The guy doesn't say much about this fight, so I get through it pretty easily, but have to rely on stalling out the Gyarados with Toxic and Leech on my Venusaur since I can't really hit it too hard with anything else. I continue oh. to hammer away as the guy suggests there it again is. for about the ninth time now, and it makes me wonder, who even wrote this guide? They have such a different style of writing for a guide with words and phrases I don't really see written a lot, and I'm sure that if they're involved with games media, they probably have a Twitter account or something. I notice on the very first page of the guide has the name Eric Isia Milonas. It's funny because when I first Eric? played through Fire Red as a kid, I actually named my character Eric for no particular reason. My name's not even Eric. Are we gonna... are we going to meet? The legend behind this book? And now the person guiding us through Fire Red is named Eric. I look them up and the first result is an obituary. Eric unfortunately passed away in 2018 at the age- <laughs> God! What?! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just, it's not funny. I'm just stunned. I, this, this was not going somewhere I thought it was gonna go. D Jesus Christ. I need a moment. A few moments later. I promise it's not funny. Just, it's a natural human reaction in uncomfortable situations to laugh, okay? What? This whole video, <laughs> we're just laughing at this book that's got all this mistakes and wrong things and suddenly, like, what silly guy wrote this? He's dead. Oh, God. Age of 43, and now I feel kind of bad for making fun of this guide so much. Yeah, yeah, same, Eric's dude. <laughs> work, they actually wrote a lot of other guides for a lot of games I remember from my childhood. Fire Red and Leaf Green, of course, but then there's other games like Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, Sonic Advance 2, Beyblade V-Force, and many of the older Dragon Ball Z games. Eric has a lot of other works in games media as well, and after researching a bit about Eric, they've done a lot of interesting work. So for the rest of this run, I'm doing it for you, Eric. I get through victory That's very sweet. 
I don't know if I'll ever get over this. <laughs> Road pretty easily thanks to this cheat sheet Eric wrote for us in the guide. I catch an Onyx since level 46, higher than some of my team members even, and I name it Rocky. I reach the end of Victory Road and decide to grind up a little bit to match some of the levels in the Elite Four. I level up all my Pokemon to around the early to mid 50s since I noticed that a lot of the Elite Four members have their Pokemon in the mid to late 50s, and now seems like a pretty good time to recap the team. First, we have- I'm surprised it didn't actually- He's he's saying he just like, oh, I decided to do this because I saw their levels were this. But all the other ones are like, you should be at this particular level range. So I think it's interesting that they don't appear to have done that for this, like for the Elite Four. Like that's wild. Subscribe to the Venusaur, our star that has been with us from the very beginning. Then we have Twitter, the Pidgeot, the first Pokemon we ever caught, and the Pokemon that carried us through the middle part of the game. Then we have Hawk, the Primeape, which hasn't really been used much since the Koga fight, but should be pretty good in the Elite Four. Then Fighting types aren't tend to not be as useful in Kanto playthroughs because there's no Steel or Dark types. Then we have Dan, the level 5 Caterpie that's been with us since Viridian Forest. It was originally level 3 when I caught it, and I didn't try to level it up, but somehow I sent it in just to get knocked out to get a free switch, went for a tackle, and somehow actually got a KO and got some levels, so that's how <laughs> it got to level 5. <laughs> and I funny. know I'll definitely need to send it out to die in the Elite Four to heal some of my other Pokemon. Then we have Joe the Vaporeon, which has been the best Pokemon on our team as of lately. And finally- Oh, it's a Timid! Guy, oh Rocky. my gosh, you got a Timid Vaporeon! No wonder it's so good. That's like the perfect- one of the perfect natures for it. Well, I mean, it lowers physical attack. Any nature that lowers physical attack is good for a Vaporeon. The Onyx. I step into the first room, and the Ice-type trainer Lorelei is waiting for us. I know Hawk should be pretty useful in this fight, so I lead with him and get a few nice KOs with okay. fighting-type attacks. Okay, I said fighting wasn't that useful. It- fighting can be useful, obviously. All the normal types, the rock types, and ice types. I'm saying it's not as useful as it is in other games, because in other games there are dark and steel types as well as the normal fighting and ice types. Normal um, rock and ice types. Eventually Hawk goes down, and this Jinx is a pain just like Eric warned us about in the guide. I eventually hammer away at it with Vaporeon, and now it's time to fight Bruno. I use Twitter to take care of Bruno's fighting types, then Venusaur and Vaporeon for the rest of his team as they're weak to grass and water, and get through him pretty easily. And then we have Agatha, arguably the hardest member of the Elite Four thing- Yeah, you don't have any psychic types. <laughs> to her two Gengars. I taught Earthquake to Onyx since Poison is weak to ground and Gengar is Poison, thinking this would be a pretty easy fight, but then I remembered that Gengar and Haunter have levitated in this generation, yep. so I can't use ground-type moves to knock them out, unfortunately. This fight really was a team effort with everyone getting in on the action, but luckily Venusaur finishes off the final Gengar after a lot of my team members go down. I Yikes. heal up and now it's time for Lance, the final member of the Elite Four. Eric warns us about Lance's Hyper Beams, although it really isn't that strong of a move in this generation. Lance has two Dragonairs, which Eric tells us to use electric moves on, despite no! them not being super effective. Eric, why? Apparently, everything is weak to electric according to this guide. But Vaporeon did a pretty good job in the fight though, since it has a super effective move for everything on Lance's team except for the Gyarados, which I again stall out with Venusaur. And now we have one final battle, a fight against our rival, Nintendo. Well, actually his name is just Nintend without the O since the full name- Yeah, I noticed that it. earlier. Not sure why I'm addressing this now, not at the start, because I'm sure a lot of people noticed it was missing the O. But the guy tells me that my rival's gonna leave with Pidgeot, so I leave with Vaporeon since I have an ice type move and take it out pretty easily, although Surf does more than the ice type move. The next key Pokemon yeah, goes down pretty easily Stronger as move well, but I have to stall out his Gyarados in the same way that I stalled out the one against Lance. I, I question the the decision to not have an electric type on your team in a game with just so many Gyarados, Gyaradosai, Gyaradai, Gyaradoses, Gyaratrace. <laughs> uh, get it? Because dose trace. Uh -huh. I'm very funny. Laugh. And now all that's left is Nintendo's Charizard. I decided to stay with my Venusaur even though I'm not at full health. And <gasps> the try drama! To this the oh, is this an game, anime battle? I started fighting, hammering away at my enemy for one final time, just like I suggested in the first rival battle. 
I select my move with Venusaur, but unfortunately Charizard yeah. goes for Fire Blast and takes me out very easily, so ah. I just send out Vaporeon and kill the Charizard Bummer. instead. <laughs> and that's it. We are now the champion, and we beat Fire Red and Leaf Green the way Nintendo intended. Very thanks nice. To Eric and his guy that Nintendo approved of over 15 years ago. Not gonna lie, I felt a little emotional at the end there. I didn't end up crying or anything like that, but I haven't played through a Pokemon game like that on my own without doing a Nuzlocke or any other type of challenge in a long time. And although this oh, was I all can't say the same. <laughs> video, I did still play on my own time over the course of a week or so and enjoyed playing it a lot. Finishing up this game this time felt a lot like when you spend all week binge watching a show you really like and then you finally finish it and feel a little empty on the inside. I did oh, have yeah. a pretty I know easy what you mean. time playing. When Avatar ended, when She-Ra ended. through it, but then again, I was following a guide and doing exactly what they said, and I have played through the Kanto region dozens of times before, even though I was trying to pretend like this was my first time playing the game. I think that's part of the reason why I enjoyed this playthrough so much as well. The guide took me through a slightly different route than I normally would if I was playing this on my own, and it just made this playthrough feel a bit different than other ones I have done in the past. Hmm. This is one of the most fun playthroughs I've ever had in any Pokemon game, and even though this 14 or so long hour journey is going to be all condensed into a 20 something minute video, I hope you guys liked it too. So thanks I again to it. Eric for guiding us through this game. And while there were many errors in this guide and things I definitely would have done differently, the guide still does a pretty decent job as long as you already have a basic understanding of Pokemon. I think the guidebook's main strengths is helping you navigate through tricky to navigate places like Silphco or like caves and stuff like that. With the exception of Rock Tunnel in this, that was obviously a mess, but getting through the Seafloor Cavern in the Hoenn games, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, the maps for that are a godsend. So I think that's, the guidebooks, yeah, the, the maps are excellent and like the move sets, like the level up and TM move sets in a time period prior to when you could just go to siribi.net and look it up. Those were the two things that I think are the most helpful. I'm not really sure how to end this, but I have to say that this has been one of the most fun videos I've ever made, and I also think it's going to end up being one of the best videos I ever made. So thank you again to I, Eric I for making it. this video possible, and helping countless people like myself through some of their favorite childhood games. We finally managed to beat Pokemon Fire Red the way Nintendo intended. So thank you all once again for watching, hope you guys have a great rest of your day, I'll see you all next time, and... Bye-bye. Well, I will have a great rest of my day. Thank you. Thank you so much again to Papa C for letting me make this video. I had a lot of fun reacting to this. <laughs> Just so many things I wasn't expecting. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. With an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you want to help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all!